In the last video, we talked about releasing three different versions of the bot. If you haven't watched that video, I'll leave a link in the description box. I highly recommend you to watch it before continuing further. So we have discussed about releasing three different versions of the arbitrage finder. Version one is the current version that we have that we first built for Binance exchange. We just took that same model and replicated that for Bybit and Qcoin exchange. Version 2 is going to be more accurate than version 1 where we're going to take the complete order book into account and make the calculations more accurate. I'll explain shortly why we need to take order book into account but doing so makes the calculation more accurate. I also updated the UI in version 2 and I made it a little prettier than the previous version. The previous version was okay but I'm not really satisfied with the way it looks so I decided why not just give it a new makeover. I'm sure you're going to like it too. So these are the two major changes in the current version that we are, that I'm about to release today. It includes auto book and it's going to have a prettier UI. Version 3 is what most of you are looking for with, with a fully automated trading functionality. I'm going to release that in the coming weeks. Now let's look at why we need to take auto book into account to make the calculations more accurate. Now in order to do a triangular arbitrage you need to do three trades in succession and i'm assuming you're going to do a market orders for the fastest entry time so the all the calculations are done taking that into account now what you see here is the order book of btc order book snapshot of btc usdt and, and you should already be familiar with this right you have all the asks on the top and all the bids on the bottom now the bottommost price on the bid side which is 223593.06 that is the best ask price in the order book and the topmost price on the bid side, which is 23.592.64, that's the best bid price on the order book. Now, what the current version of the bot does is it takes the best ask price and the best bid price as the price when you execute a market order, depending on whether you're buying or selling. But that is not entirely accurate because this price is only applicable for this quantity, which is 59.92 US dollars. Similarly, even this price is only applicable for 6 US dollars. So if you were to trade with a larger quantity, then this price is no longer valid. You would have to pay higher or lower depending on, you know, whether you're buying or selling. So that could throw the calculations off, which is the reason why we need to take order book into account to make the calculations more accurate. Let's, let's take an example. Let's run the calculations with $100 and see how it affects. Let's do the calculation for the market buy side, right, for $100. Now, if you were to do a market buy order, then your orders would be executed against the ask side of the order book. So here you can see that $59. Let's round it off to $59 to make it simple. But the bot takes the full quantity into account, okay? So $59 is what we have for this price. So what we need to do is we need to do a weighted average of the price to get to get the accurate price. So $59 is what we have available at this price, which is 59.23,593.06. And then next you have $2,600, but we only have $100, right? We only want to calculate for $100. So 100 minus 49, 59 is $41. So 41 times 23,593.10. This is, we, you divide that by 100 to get the weighted price, weighted average price of $100, which is 23,593.08. You can see that it's slightly higher than the best uh, ask price on the order book, which is 23,593.06. Now, as we increase the quantity from $100 to $1,000 or even higher, this price also keeps increasing, thereby reducing your profits, which is why it's important to take this into account. Similarly, on the sell side, you have six US dollars available at this price, the, the best bid price, and $15 available at the second price, and around $250 available at the third price. So we just need $100, right? So six times the first bid price and 15 times the second uh, bid price and then the remaining 100 minus six plus 15, which is 79, $79 at 23,592.34. So we, we divide that with 100 to get the weighted average price of the sell side, which is 23,592.39. Again, if you look at it, if you compare that with the best bid price on the order book, it's slightly lower. So if you, if you observe the pattern, as we increase the quantity, your buy price keeps increasing and your sell price keeps decreasing. So what does it mean, right? Generally, you want to buy low and sell high. As your buy price keeps increasing and sell price keeps decreasing, your profits are also minimized. 
So this is really crucial. So if if you haven't taken this into account and done an arbitrage trade, then the bot might show it as profitable, but when you actually execute it, it might end up in a loss. Which is why this step was really crucial to get accurate results. And once we implement auto trading feature, this is going to be even more essential, right? Because the bot is automatically going to trade. So the more accurate we can get with the calculations, the better. Now let's talk about the code changes. From a UI and functionality standpoint, the bot is going to look very similar to the version that I released last week for Bybit Exchange. So in this video, I'm going to in this section of the video, I'll discuss some of the challenges that I faced while implementing PokeCoin. The first thing is I needed to download all these icons directly from the exchange. I made a dedicated video on how to do it. I followed the same approach and downloaded all these icons. The good thing about Bybit was that there were only 300 uh, assets to download, whereas on Qcoin you have close to 1000 assets. So it was a little time taking, but still I was able to download all these icons and uh, we, we can now use these to make the UI look prettier. Next, we needed a way to get order book information to calculate arbitrage opportunities. The good thing is Qcoin provides this WebSocket feed, which provides the 50 best bid and best ask data every 100 milliseconds which is fast enough so i use this topic to get the order book information of all the pairs and use that for arbitrage calculation there was a challenge in implementing for qcoin so let me compare it with bybit to illustrate what the issue was so the good thing about bybit was you were able to hold all the websocket uh, topics in a single connection and the only challenge is you can only subscribe to 10 topics at a time so I've used an async loop to incrementally subscribe to all the topics, but you were able to hold all the topics in a single connection, which is not the case with Qcoin. So with Qcoin, you can only hold up to 300 topics in a single connection. It says 300 here, but in reality, when I tested it, I found the number to be 100. So again, this is not something, this is not a limitation in the code. This is just how the API is designed. So we have to adhere to their, you know, to the documentation to make it work. As in, we don't have control on this. This is set by Qcoin. So you can only hold up to 100 topics on a single WebSocket connection. But you know that on Qcoin, you have more than close to 1,000 thousand assets and over 800 or 700 trading pairs when, when I tested it. So the only way to manage the workload is by creating a pool of WebSocket connections. So I created a pool of 10 WebSockets and distribute the, distributed the load among those 10 WebSockets to, to facilitate this whole thing. So that was a big challenge. So working with one WebSocket itself is a challenge, but here you have to work with 10 WebSockets and distribute the load. And we also put in a control in the calculation function where even if one WebSocket is not active, the calculation wouldn't run. Because, because think about it, if one WebSocket is inactive, then the price, the order book price will be obsolete and that could throw off the calculation. So the calculation would only run when all the WebSockets is active to make it more accurate. The last issue that I face with Qcoin is circular pairing. I don't know what to call it, so I'm just calling it circular pairing. So if you look at this example, you have on Qcoin, you have USDT, USDC market pair, and also the reverse of it, USDC and USDT. This is not the case with Binance or Bybit. Generally, if you have two assets tradable by single market pair, then the reverse is not possible, which is the case with Qcoin. So when I first ran the bot and when I looked at the results, the results were a bit off. The calculations showed a higher number than what really was. So when I looked into it, I found that uh, the circular pairing is an issue in, in Qcoin. So I had to optimize the code to resolve this bug. This is not an issue with Binance or Bybit at the moment, but why take the risk, right? What if Binance or Bybit decides to add the circular pairs later on? So it's better to feature-proof the code and I will apply this fix to the other exchanges as well. All right, now let's look at how to run the bot. Like I explained in the last video, you don't have to install anything or do any configuration. You can directly run these executable files, which I'll leave a link in the description box, and you can just download and run it for your operating system. So I'm using a Windows machine, so I'll be running, you just have to double click this windows.exe file to run the bot. You also have files for Mac and Linux version. Some people have reported to have issues with the Mac version. I don't have a Mac OS, I've never used Mac, so I don't know how to, you know, resolve this issue but if you if you're having issues maybe try to find a windows machine or buy a private virtual private cloud it should be very cheap uh, and and you can run this bot all right so once you run the bot you can open this url in the browser to start accessing the tool so this is the ui for the tool and 
as you can see it's very similar to the bybit version that we released last week the first thing that you would not notice but uh, i changed the port to 3100 so the bybit version runs on 3000 port whereas this one i changed the port to 3100 so that you could run both these bots simultaneously right what if you want to run run both if i use the same port you won't be able to do it so i changed the port to 3100 so that you know if you want you can run both bybit and qcoin simultaneously uh, I'll walk you through the interface again if you already watched that last video then you can skip this part for those who but for those who haven't I'll just do a quick uh, overview of how to use the bot so here we specify the starting market which is the starting coin let's leave it USDT for now and then we specify the amount so the calculations against the order book are performed against this amount so if I set it to hundred dollars hundred USDT that means it's going to do all the calculations as hundred US dollars and then here we specify the top number of entries to show in the table so the entries are sorted on descending order based on the best pnl so if we specify s10 then the table shows the best 10 results from the lot and then we hit apply and reboot for these changes to make take take effect so if you go back to the terminal you will see that the board is first identifying all the possible paths so there are about 783 paths 783 pairs and 1000 paths for usdt market and then it establishes connection to all the 10 web sockets and subscribes to the order book for all these you know 783 pairs these are distributed across all these 10 web sockets and and you can see the results on the ui let's understand how to interpret this table so you would start with usdt let's start with the first line item okay so you start with usdt and you would perform a buy operation to convert 100 us dollars into ethereum and this is the price you would get for 100 us dollars and then you would confirm your convert your ethereum to usdc by performing a sell operation at this price again so all the prices are calculated based on this amount okay and then you would convert your usdc back to usdt by performing a sell operation and this is the price you would get and this is the net pnl of all these three market orders in succession now this pnl value does not take trading fees into account like I explained in the last video, the trading fees are different for different exchanges. And even within an exchange, it's possible that some, some pairs have less trading fees than others. So it's convoluted to take into account. So what I thought is just ignore, uh, not take trading fees into account. And when we implement the automated trading system, we could set a higher threshold on the UI, thereby eliminating you know, the effect that not taking trading fees would have on automated trading. So that's it. So that's how you interpret this entire table let's i stopped the bot to freeze the values let me restart the bot and let's try for some other uh, values let's refresh the page okay let's try for thousand ten thousand us dollars okay and i will want to show top five line items apply and reboot again so every time you hit apply and reboot the bot identifies all the paths and you know re-establishes all the connections awesome so this is how you would see the results you must have seen right previously when we ran for just hundred dollars there were a lot of green items but once we increase the amount to ten thousand dollars you only see a couple of green items so that that means you know the profits are inversely proportional to the trading amount so the higher size you set the lower the chance of making a profit which aligns with what i explained at the beginning of the video now let's try for a different market right so let's try for ethereum and let's run for one ethereum and show top 10 entries hit apply and reboot and if you go back to the terminal yeah let's see how many paths are there for ether for ethereum yeah 329 pairs and 420 paths so the bot should establish yeah all the connections are established now you should see the results awesome so these are the results for ethereum you can see the starting pair is ethereum and the last pair is ethereum and these are the pnl values for these opportunities so there you go so you don't you, you don't have to run it just for usd to the market you can run for any any market so let's try for btc btc i want to try for 0.1 btc and let's take 20 results and have apply and reboot it, it takes a few seconds for you know those things to happen awesome so now you see the results for btc perfect so let's just try one last time for usdc and i want to try for let's say 1000 usdc and show the top five entries apply and reboot takes a few seconds and perfect so these are the results for usdc so there you go so that is how you would run the bot you put in the market and 
these settings stay intact as, as long as you keep this terminal open. So when you refresh the page, you can see that the settings are intact. Only when you close this window and launch it again is when you have to apply these settings again. So that's it for this video. Uh, I know everybody is excited and eagerly waiting for version 3, which is a fully automated trading system. Uh, that is my priority right now. It's going to take a few weeks to release because of the complexity, but I'm not working on any other video. I want to release the automated bot soon and wrap up these arbitrage videos before moving on to any other topic.